Hi guys, how are you? I don't know how many people are awake, but I'm awake. Where are you in the world? What time is it? Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you? Aloha. Let's get some better lighting. There we go. I'm awake. I appreciate you liking the video. How are you? Hey. Hello. Where are you in the world? What time is it? I just, you know, said, let me come read. But I don't feel like editing. I've been getting really creative late in the night. So I'm staying up later than usual. And I was like, I can paint or I can read. And I was like, let me do some karma yoga and read. So, you know, I like to go live randomly. I learned my lesson about announcing it. Then you get like 600,000 people in the chat room and it's overwhelming. Better to go live spontaneously. So for those of you who are here, it's meant to be. I like it. It's really cozy. Hi, how are you? Where are you guys in the world? What time is it? How are you feeling? What do you need readings on? Karma yoga, tell me. Come on, chat, chat. <laughs> you can see somebody's waving to you there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, off you go. <laughs> so you can see my my buddies up with me. We just got home. So we had a busy day. How are you? Welcome, welcome. I am doing well, thank you. I hope you're doing well. I've been working like crazy. It's like every single time I try to stop giving private readings and I get super booked with private readings. Every single time I try to stop doing advocacy work, then suddenly there's issues in the world and people are like, hey, can you come help? So it's like I try to stop doing what I was born to do. It's all my 12th house energy. My chart's full of uh, some interesting 12th house placements. So I'll tell you a secret. I'm a Virgo moon, 12th house moon. So my, that's why I think I just love everything spiritual. Anyway, let's see, I'm reading the chat. So any new uh, job opportunities coming your way, you'll need to get a private reading, my dear. I won't be answering those type of questions, but any type of questions about the world's energies, general advice that can help everybody. That's what we want to read on, things that can be of assistance to everyone who comes to watch the videos. If you need private questions, I'm more than happy to do a personal reading for you, but I would also like to announce something that I'm going to start doing. So every month I'm going to choose someone to give a free reading to for Karma Yoga, one of my services that I offer at my website. So if you want to enter on the videos, the next video that I upload, not this live chat, and I'll make an announcement there too. You just have to comment in the comment section that you want to enter and you either type tarot or astrology. And then if you win, every month I'll choose one person. You get a free reading, whatever, of your choice. Okay, so keep that in mind for those of you who need private questions answered. Now, Cassidy, for your question, Cassidy wants advice from the ancestors on connecting with them more through divination, remembering past lives. I suggest you get into your natal chart, study your IC placement. I also suggest you study your Saturn placement, your South Node placement. And then I suggest you skip over the obvious aspects and instead study the midpoints for said placements to see what type of equations there are in the conversations and that's going to give you a wealth of information way more 
than any type of channeling or cartomancy ever will for your specific energy. Okay, Erica Koger says, what is happening with the soulmate? Okay, God bless you guys and your soulmate journey. Vera, thank you very much. I am doing well, thank you. Just been working like crazy, doing advocacy work, like 16 hour days. So like four, five hours of sleep. But I'm, I mean, life is like this. So I, I will sleep when I'm dead, you know? Um, how do to know and get confirmations on what ancestors you're connecting with? Hmm. What would I advise for you, Cassidy? Guys, I'm just getting the cards prepped and primed while we converse, okay? Hmm. Do you know yourself, Cassidy? And to all others who resonate with her question, do you know yourself? Do you know your crafts and your gifts? Can you discern between the energies that come to you? Do you have belief in your abilities? Do you believe the signs and synchronicities that are shown to you? And then when you are petitioning the ancestors, are you making sure to call through those who have the highest interest for you, who want the best for you? Because not all ancestors are good ancestors. Can you tell the difference between the type of energies that are coming into your life? When you get down on, on when, when you get into your humility and you submit yourself before the universal consciousness and you petition and you pray on behalf of yourself and others, do you notice the prosperity and abundance increasing in your life or are you seeing havoc and discord? Ask yourself these questions and you'll be able to answer that. You'll know which ancestors you're connecting to and even if you don't, you'll know if they mean you well or not. So Michael T is a 12th house moon too in Scorpio. Ooh, honey, I feel you. We some deep people, ain't we, baby? Mm-hmm. Aloha, watery being. Hi, Princess Nia. Um, Savage Mama, we're not doing personal questions. We're asking questions that can benefit the collective. I wish you lots of good love and Midas touch and that connection. So I send you good vibes. What truths are being hidden from the collective from Cassidy Johnson? God has come through. One. Two. Three. Well, what's the first cards that come out are the Ten of Pentacles with the Emperor card. And then we also have the Seven of Swords. So for me as a reader, that's talking about the economy and how there's a lot of false, um, false abundance when it comes to the economy. Maybe in an effort to get people to be more frivolous or careless with the money that they have, you know, if they build it up, then you'll boost it up kind of vibe. But instead, they're asking you to be very conservative and cautious with your planning when it comes to your finances. I keep uh, seeing the, the, the singer. I don't know his name, but I know he sings the song. They're showing me his face. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life. Do you know this? Um, it's like this old song from back in the day. My dad used to bump it hard. <sighs> anyway, I guess it's, an, it's uh, you know. Mm. Put it this way, the way that this energy looks to me, it's like that crucial moment when a snake is shedding its skin 
And it's like, it's almost there. And it goes through all of that stretching and pulling only to get the dead skin to the middle of its belly. It still has so much more to go, you know? Or like that, that crucial moment when the caterpillar is emerging, but it goes through several stages before the wings actually develop. It's like the earth is going through that. So it's like, imagine these force fields, you know, and the earth is passing through each one because that's what I'm being shown. It goes through each force field and the energy expands. So it's a lot of shaking up going on because... Um, a lot of the vibrational and energetic changes, you know, with death and the seven of pentacles, it can't go. What do you want to call it? The new activated earth? That's this kind of energy. It won't live there, but it can't just be ignored. It has to be purged. I am seeing um, the sins of the father. The children pay for the sins of the father. So I don't know what that means there. I mean, I do, but I'm not about to get into that because I am not required to educate the uninitiated. Okay. I would really appreciate you guys liking the video. Thank you so much. So now I'm scrolling back up. Hi, baby. Now. I love being y'all's auntie. Okay. Um, okay. Just reading the comments, guys. Hello, Madam Mishra. I'm doing well, thank you. So when is the global crisis going to end? There's turmoil, riots, and natural calamities in every corner of the world. And that comes from Akanksha Mishra. Hi, Jen. Hi, 6996. Just looking at the comments. Okay. So, right, a lot of this is being looked at on the surface value. It's the surface energy that doesn't get the deeper analysis that's deserved. You literally have to dig deeper. The seven of pentacles keeps coming out. For me as a reader, the seven of pentacles, especially in situations like this, can deal with those things which we bury into the subconscious right? But they fuel our day-to-day -day activities, those things which we do habitually, those things which we try to plant and seed. That seven of pentacles energy is an underlying influencing factor because it's that shadow energy, the subconscious energy that often gets undealt with. Okay. You feel what I'm saying there? So uh, they're talking about deeper issues needing to be analyzed. Now also Pluto's energy is coming out here. Okay, so this has to be talking about a lot of uh, how Pluto is dominating the planetary conversations, especially those which are governing the United States right now. I've been studying other countries, but it's really, really predominant here. It's everywhere, of course. You know, the United States is getting ready to gear into the energy that's going to lead it into its Pluto return. You guys, you hear my cat knocking at the door. It's, I have two cats. One of them is knocking at the door. Yes, they, they knock. Like, literally knock. Okay. They get so jealous. They will come and lay all over here so I can't read for y'all. Anyhow, just ignore that tapping. They'll stop. Now, the Pluto return is coming for the United States, right? And some people, ignorance is bliss. They think, oh, well, that's really not gonna activate until 2022. It's not really gonna hit until 2024. We have time, blah, blah, blah. Pluto is such a slow moving energy that when it begins to rev up and move forward, when it ingresses, okay, you will feel that energy way before the actual date of activation. So we're feeling it now. Now, Pluto return comes around every, what, 247 to 250 years. So each of us need to look back at our 
country's history, world histories to see what's been going on karmically. That's good, bad, and neutral. So you can see exactly what's getting, how to say this compassionately, so that you can see exactly what's getting balanced. Okay, so it's one of those things where a lot of us don't want to deal with, you know, the hidden realities of things, but they're coming out to be dealt with everywhere. Okay, so I feel like, you know, to answer your question, Misha, you know, with Empress and Justice, when it's done, it's done. Timing, I can't tell you, but there are whole bloodlines activating this energy. Okay, it's deep, uh, you know. Yeah, so welcome, guys. I'm going to keep looking at the comments. Okay, now they just moved up, so I have to follow them. How will we return to normal after this pandemic and relationship, love, and finances? What is normal? What does that really mean? We live in such insulated bubbles and we create a lot of safety around ourselves. But just sit down, you know, with all of this uh, constant media being shoved into your subconscious. Sit down, watch a show like Alone or Survivor, one of those shows where they drop you in the middle of nowhere, Antarctica, and tell you to survive for 90 days. And you watch the fittest of the fittest go at it, straight primal paleolithic energy, right? Just observation of that, let alone going through it, shows you there is no such thing as normal. There is no control over anything. We are drops in the ocean. So, yes, Nina Simone did the, a, re, a remake or cover. No, she's the originator, isn't she? Someone remade her. Rest in power, Nina. Misunderstood. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful matriarch. I'm just looking at the cards. Um, let's see, what does the remaining six months of this year look like? I'm gonna do a special reading on that. So not quite yet, okay? I, we need to get out of um, some energies first. So when I get into August, I'm gonna do a reading on that because the astrology for it, <laughs> crazy. My real name, Anna, is Yasmina. That is what's on my passport. You want to know my last name? I have no private social media and I will not share my private life. So, I send you lots of love, Anna. 50 earthquakes across the globe within 30 minutes. That's what Approva Singh says. Eveline says, my cats want to join in the stream. No, baby, they want to climb up here on the table and lay out and look at me like, worship me. <laughs> they want some loving, but we're going to cuddle up when I go to sleep. So, um, Guys, I'm not going to answer personal questions, okay? I'm not going to put that on a public platform. Remember, the FTC monitors these readings. So make sure that um, you are not uh, taking readings from readers that are uploaded to YouTube. They need to be uploaded to a private server or something off of YouTube. Okay, that's just uh, lawyer bay advice for you. <laughs> yes, sir. So uh, keywords for the age of Aquarius, Watery Being says, okay, so I know a lot of readers say that we're in the age of Aquarius, but I have very different perspective. I feel that we are in the transitionary period where, uh, 
you know, we're not quite at one age, but we're not quite in the other yet, which is exactly what we're going through right now. I don't think it's long though. It won't be long now for sure. Because um, we still have a lot of the Christ consciousness energy, which is um, very prevalent in the current age that we're transitioning out of. So that's what makes me feel like we're in the transition of it, not quite actually activating and it quite yet, okay? But you can see the type of children that are being born, that there's a quickening in the energy, some type of like activation, um, speeding, because the kids are coming out pretty awesome, aren't they? So, Nal says, with the recent three men who were found, are there people in the background trying to initiate some sort? Yes. That's what my ancestors have been talking about in my private readings. They're like, they're trying to start a race for it, Yasmina. Don't you fall for it. And I was like, okay, you know, because you guys have to remember, especially uh, people of the African diaspora, you are mixed race, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. Unless you can trace back generation after generation of pure untainted blood, if you are a child of the diaspora, chances are that eight times out of 10, you have blood from elsewhere. Okay, we had the Chinese and the Japanese come to the United States to help build railroads alongside the African Americans. We had those from the UK, especially Ireland, fleeing the potato famine, you know, a lot of what's known as the Black Irish mixed in with African Americans, for example. I don't know about the rest of the world, but I know here. Okay, so you, you know, you do those genetic tests, pray tell if you do, you check off that you cannot be used for scientific data or research. But then once you get your results back, you go and see, you're gonna see you're like 20 to 40% other from something else. So don't hate yourself and don't allow them to bait you into that. Now that doesn't take away you, you know, doing what you need to do to align yourself with overcoming the oppression and suppression because enough is enough. But at the same time, you don't allow them to bait you into something that turns you against your brother or your sister. And your brother or your sister sometimes don't look like you, but stand in solidarity and resolution with you. We are greater in number when we do not resist. There are apps out there. You want to support, download the Black Wall Street app, okay? That's one of them where you can go and find local black businesses. You want to get educated and, and, and empowered, buy your books from a black bookstore. Come on, you can do it. But don't you let them bait you into a, a race war. Don't you let them bait you into hating each other. Okay, you know how many people the past few days have called me a racist? Child, please. Know thyself so nobody can tell you about yourself. And if you love thyself, you have to love thy neighbor. Okay. So. Is the physical an illusion? Viviana Gutierrez says. So my opinion of it is that we are in the simulation. I like to tell people, imagine that in your true reality, you went to the fair or the carnival and there was a booth there for a virtual reality simulation and you paid X amount of dollars to sit down for however many hours to experience life on earth. And what we're going through is that game, you know, and death is game over and you take off the headset and you're back into reality. So, I mean, I'm just, I understand people can't, some people can't deal with that, but as a student of astrology, as an advanced student of cartomancy, having had the life that I've had, where I have, I have experienced miracles from the smallest, most minute to the, oh my God, I can't believe that just happened. You cannot tell me that there's not something going on that's way above what our conscious can understand. And none of this is real. That's why I'm always telling people the prophecy must fulfill itself. 
Okay. And I understand you can get lost in it because, you know, I've had things happen in my life and my family, you know, in my own personal experiences, you know, I carry that pain. I release it the best I can day by day as well, but don't you let them provoke you. Don't you let them bait you in. You are required, especially in this time to be a free thinker. You have way too much access way too much access to information. You do not even need to know how to read or write. You can listen and gain access. There is no excuse for not understanding. And don't be so ignorant, and I say this with love, as to only look at those things and those opinions and those views which support your own, because that's gonna send you down a rabbit hole as well. You gotta look at every perspective, even those which oppose you because that's the only way in your free thinking you will know how to move in independence. Your mind belongs to you. There lies your sovereignty. It can never ever be tainted or taken away unless you choose. So I'm reading the chat right now. Yes, Watery Being says we're all connected whether it's through blood or history. Mm-hmm. We all 37th cousins. <laughs> okay. So do I believe in reincarnation? Yes. Yes, I do. I surely do. So Watery Pink says the world is the library. Evelyn says she resonates. Okay, so I think my chat's updated. Hello everyone, welcome. I would appreciate your likes. Thank you for liking the video. I hope you all are having a good night, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. I am up late. It has been my custom and my tradition for the past several nights. I have been binging on this show on Netflix called Pose. I love it. It's my favorite show. Anybody seen it? I love it. And I'll be like, I'll be in the mirror like Vogue. Vogue, Vogue, Vogue. I don't know what I'm doing, but I love it. Oh my gosh. I resonate with that. You know, I feel like if I had been born in that generation where the balls were like the balls, I would have been a mother. I would have been a house mother. For those of you who watch the show, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I would have been Mama Yaz. Come on here, baby. Let me read that natal chart and cook for you. <laughs> yes. Mm. Okay. Okay, so. Basically, <laughs> All my cards are saying is you guys keep expecting things to move on. You're waiting for when it's going to die down, when it's going to move on. And they're pretty much saying good luck with that. <laughs> it's not going away anytime soon. The dab king likes my voguing. Yes, you guys get on Netflix and watch Pose and be enlightened, be educated about other types of uh, experiences, you know, which will be very different from your own. I learned so much. Wow. Okay, so some random messages coming in. Some of you, your methods of birth control are going to fail you if you're not careful. <laughs> I'll be the godmom. <laughs> Look at that. Them babies trying to come through. With the high priestess, I guarantee you it would be a daughter. So lots of conceptions are going to happen. Also with the high priestess and the moon, that's that major eclipse that just happened on the 5th. Ooh, how was that for you guys? Did you do some um, some purging? I, I got on YouTube and told some people off. So you know I felt the eclipse. <laughs> did you feel it? <laughs> I sure did. 
after a whole year, because the channel is just a little bit over a year old, after a whole year of people just poking me, I went off. <laughs> now I'm good. I think once a year should suffice. <laughs> oh my goodness. So guys, what do you want to talk about? I will read on anything you want that is not a personal question. I have the super chat turned off because I just want to do this out of genuine give back, okay? So, love. <laughs> okay, goddess, what's up with love? Give me a love reading. Love for the collective. Goddess Barbie said, read on King John. <laughs> oh, oh, don't even get me started. Y'all gonna have all his people flock to the video like, you are a horrible person. How dare you talk about our savior, our messiah? How dare you repent right now? Nah, nah, y'all ain't gonna have them come for me. <laughs> no. Well, I have activated a whole new side of my natal chart. So <laughs> as, as my father used to say, my friend, respect yourself. <laughs> okay, if you don't know what I mean, okay, if you don't know what I mean, all my Niger people, he used to say, my friend, okay? Whenever he said my friend, okay, he was not really calling you a friend. And if, and if he said, respect yourself, woo, he was about to get a read and read you to fill. Hey, how are you? Welcome, guys. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for participating. Okay. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. Any relationships that happen between now and November, because I have the Scorpio energy here with death card. Any relationships that happen between now and November are really going to be struggle love if they're new, because I have the Ace of Pentacles. Now, if they're already established, then they're going to go into some type of deeper form of intimacy. But there may be some type of separation that happens where, um, for those of you who are being undervalued, your worth is not being seen, your contributions are not being acknowledged, there's no reciprocity, for example. You know, there may be some type of separation, a very mini tower moment with the five of wands and the knight of wands energy or the king of wands energy, because, uh, you know, someone needs to see someone's worth and value so that, you know, they come back around and see their blessing. A lot of karmic energy here. So uh, I am a reader who believes that karmic relationships are beneficial and meant to be. I don't see them as something bad or something that needs to be prayed against because great lessons come from them, okay? All that that means is there's a lot of crazy energy happening and the faster moving planets to keep two people attracted and drawn together long enough that they can work out whatever contract they have between their natal charts, okay? And then once that's finished, the faster moving energies move out of the chart, out of the composite and sinistry energy and voila, suddenly tower moments because you two have to get the heck away from each other. So a lot of that is being realized at this time, okay? And then a lot of people are gonna be trying to reconcile and come together before something is too late, right? And, and I feel like death and with Scorpio is coming out there and then I have Queen of Cups, so Scorpio again. Um, because really nothing really clears up until the end of November. And even then, you're still going to fill it until mid-January. So, hi, Sayuri. Hello, how are you?
Wow, guys. Hey, anybody, when you're reading, does your nose start itching? Anybody know what that means? I, I tried to research it. It was just too woo-woo for me. <laughs> Can you imagine for me? I was like, oh, too crazy spiritual. But that's my Virgo. My Virgo doesn't like I see in spirituality. So <laughs> my Virgo is like, no. <laughs> okay. Eveline says, whoa, that her girlfriend and she separated because got stuck in a very karmic situation. They've known each other since high school. Yeah, Eveline, it's not over. Give it until the end of the year and then see what happens. That's when you're going to know if it's officially over or not. If it's really worth it to you, you're going to have to really invest and fight for it because the way these energies go, it's opposing energies. So one is going to be very um, engaging and one is going to be very stubborn because when you look at the energies of the current retrograde energies that we're in, Saturn and Mercury are bosom buddies, okay? They are best friends. So Mercury is like zoom, 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 and Saturn's like, Oh, I like to move slow. And Mercury is like, zoom, 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 zoom. Okay. So you have one person who's like, let's go. And another person who's like, no. And so there's a coming apart in order to come back together. But then you also take into consideration that we live in the plane of free will and duality. So the choice is always yours. The other person. So much goes into it. I would recommend um, boosting your auric fields. So that way you can pull towards you faster. Because if you're closing off to love, you're not going to pull anything to you. It all starts through love. Okay? So, yeah. Um, guys, also check into your 12th house energy. Especially as we get into August, the summer. Okay? Greetings, fly books. What's up? Noses can sense magnets a little bit. Oh, okay. So I guess I have little magnets on my nose. <laughs> uh -huh. Right, right. Uh, so, ooh, Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Venus, Evelyn. I bet you're very physically beautiful. Okay. Um, do a video regarding angel numbers and their meetings. Oh, you guys. Listen, so I'm one of those people who's like, surrender reality as it is. Get up, get out of the higher chakras and get grounded. So uh, when I see repeating numbers, I do not look them up. I, I acknowledge that whatever I am doing is in alignment. And then I let it go. So that way I'm not resisting or chasing the energy. And instead I draw it to me quicker. It instills more faith in me. So for me to sit and do a video on the meaning of it goes against my rationale. Okay. Is there any guidance on self-growth and, and transformation? I mean, don't buy into anybody's dogma. Not mine, not anybody. How do you feel? Okay. Somebody's going to come and tell you A, B, and C don't go together. Well, let me tell you something. How do they know? Have they walked a day in your shoes? Did they have the experiences that helped to formulate the person that you are, that you've become? No. So how can they tell you that A, B, and C don't go together? How do you feel? That's growth and transformation. Truth unto self. Knowledge of self. Honoring thyself. Honoring thy temple. You know? Honoring boundaries. Read. Read as much as you can. You know, my daughter is begging me for a TV because I just prefer to have books in the house. Read. Travel. Get into the world. Get out of the tourist adventures. Okay? That's for another lifetime. Get into the world. Travel. Go into the bush. Go into the villages of the country that you're visiting. Bring gifts and offerings to the people. Let them teach you indigenous lessons that can change your whole life and your whole perspective. 
you know? When people have an issue with you, when they're telling you off, read into what they're really saying. Have compassion for their pain, even if you don't like them and you don't agree. Because something about that pain is resonating in you. When good things come into your life, even the smallest, most minute, give thanks. That in itself will expand you. Growth and transformation. Cubed, baby. As far as the eye can see. Gratitude. It's our currency. It's the only currency. Love is the foundation from which it's all built. And gratitude is what keeps it moving. I'm reading the live chat. Alice Ermine says, almost everyone that they meet has a spiritual gift. Why is that? I don't know, Alice, but maybe. <laughs> Y'all, I am not your guru, okay? <laughs> I am out here learning day to day just like you. <laughs> okay, baby, let me tell you, Alicia, Alicia. Uh, how do you feel about your spiritual gifts? I bet your Venus semi-squares Mars in, in, in your chart. Look at your aspects for, for Venus. How do you feel about your gifts? How do you feel about sharing your gifts? Are you being shown people who are very free and authentic in the sharing of themselves? regardless of what others have to say about what they should and shouldn't be doing? So are they reflecting back to you the need for you to be free and transparent and sharing yours? Are they reflecting back to you that it's okay for you to do that? Just like they're showing you that they're doing it and they're okay, they're safe. You will be safe if you do it too. Is it that the universe is showing you to believe in yourself because you keep meeting people who are just like you? Hey, they do what you do and they're cool with it. Maybe you could be cool with yourself too. Let me tell you, if I shake your hand or touch you, I'm gonna see everything, things I shouldn't know, okay? Growing up as a kid, I was convinced. I miss my grandmother so much because she would be like, baby, you're okay, you're okay. I would be like, no. I went to so many doctors because I thought, I have to be crazy. And they're like, nah, <laughs> you know, you need to exercise your inner child, but you're okay. So eventually you have to surrender and become comfortable with yourself. And then when you meet other people like you, embrace your soul tribe. Don't fight it. It sucks to be alone in this world. It's not natural. Uh, Princess Nia says that that's why she's part of my Patreon because she has no idea how to check the current energies. So is it safe for me to announce that? Okay, guys, so I'm working on some things. I'm not going to tell you exactly what, but I'm going to be releasing them at the end of the year. It's safe and protected, so I can tell you um, eventually I'm going to stop giving readings like I do because I just can't. I, I have other things I have to do. And there are things going on in my natal chart where I need to pull back from that. So with that being said, um, I'm creating something that will allow you to get readings from me still. And it's super affordable and accessible, and it'll be available on Apple devices and Android devices. So hang in there, Princess Nia and everyone like her, because soon you'll be able to read your own energies every day, every week, every month, whenever you want. All of my interpretations and my knowledge will be available to you like your little pocket astrologer. Like I'm right there in your pocket, like, hey, boo, let me tell you what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So... Flybook says that they're having trouble moving forward, feeling stuck. That's the retrogrades. Don't worry about how to let go. Just stay here right now. It's called the present because it's a gift. Stay here. Stay here with me. Be here with me. Be here with us. You belong here. 
You have a right to be here. And everything that you're going through is transient. And that's the reminder. The mantra is this too shall pass. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, okay, Eveline wants to know, what is everyone's favorite book of all time? Eveline would like some book recommendations. So if you guys would like to recommend some books for Eveline, please type it in the comments if you're watching in the future or in the chat if you're present with us now. Okay. So, well, you know, um, Stella says that uh, she's been having a hard time letting go, feeling like her negative emotions are invalid, but it's just natural with the current energies. You know, when it happens, like, I'll tell you an, an example. So, you know, I have my daughter on a chore board. So every time she does something that is agreeable, she gets a star. Each star adds up to a certain amount of, of cents. And at the end of every week, she gets totaled up and money put into her bank account. Okay. So she's been doing really good with her reading and her writing. She made a lot of money and she's like, okay, we're going to Walmart. It's Barbie time. So we're in Walmart today to get her her Barbies. You know, she got her little debit card because I'm teaching her financial literacy because too many of us are not teaching our kids that. So I'm not bragging. I'm mentioning it. It's also ask you to teach youth things that will actually help them to have a future. Okay. Because they're not going to learn it in school. I don't even, I don't care if you send them to the best private school, they're not going to learn it. Okay. So we're in Walmart and this lady, man, like hell on wheels with the shopping cart, million miles per hour, almost ran my baby over. <laughs> now, you know, I'm sweet, but you know, that Scorpio's in there. So I stopped and I looked at her and then, you know, all of the ancestors came to me and was like, no, no, do not read her today. Don't do it. She has something going on in her life. She needs prayer and Jesus. Walk away. And I just pulled my baby close to me, <laughs> went to self-checkout and got the heck out of Walmart. Okay. This is... What's going on? People are not aware. People are in pain. Hurt people hurt people. You feel me? You know, you can let them bring the lion or the lioness out of you, but make sure you conduct yourself in a classy way. Don't have these people out here making you act out of character because you're better than that. Okay, you do not need to participate in their dehumanizing of you because they can't relate to their own humanity. <laughs> Ichi says that my self control is impeccable. <laughs> Honey, let me tell you. <laughs> there is a reason why I do martial arts. <laughs> a lot of you will think it's very non-spiritual, but I like to go to the shooting range. And I am a student of martial arts. I meditate every day, every day, sometimes twice a day. And that makes a whole heck of a difference. Because there was a time. There was a time when I would not talk to you. I would just punch you right there. Break your nose. Blood. 
stare at you and then start screaming, going crazy. There are stories. And then I grew up, I had kids. I realized, crap, that's somebody else's baby. I love my babies. Can't have anybody doing that to my babies. So I can't be doing that to anyone else's baby. My kids get all the credit. Look, I'm shuffling the cards and my ancestors are like, mm-hmm, y'all don't even know. <laughs> my kids, Page of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, get all the credit. They came into my life and changed my life. Suddenly I had the most motivation ever. And I really leveled up in my life and became a boss. What's your motivation, guys? You got to have one. You can't be out here aimlessly wandering around. You stand for nothing. You'll go for anything. Who am I talking to today? Uh, I think watery being that, um, you know, it can be very enlightening to let you know which, ener which energies are governing you. Right. So I say that when, uh, you know, you see something like that in, in the chart, it may not be so obvious that that energy is governing a person until you study the chart and you see that they have, you know, six planets in Leo, but all of their other astrology, their other placements are in, in different signs. Right. So you're looking at their sun, moon and rising and their and who they are doesn't make sense because they don't match up to the stereotypical explanations of what that placement is like in that sign in that house. But then you look at the midpoints, the aspects, things like yod, steliums, the sacred geometry in, in the chart. And then you're like, oh, OK, so you look like you're Pisces, Aquarius, Taurus, but really you're Leo. So that's my take on that. Okay. Um, when I'm studying charts, I do not care about that stuff. I want to know the degrees so that I can study your midpoints and your aspects. That's how I interpret. I like to interpret from the equations. You know, the actual will is very enlightening, but it tends to be very generic and stereotypical, the interpretations that come just from studying that. And so I feel that, uh, you know, not everybody is going to be like what the stereotypical generic explanation of Venus and Scorpio is. So I'm not going to sit here and waste your time with that. But I'm going to look at every conversation and every equation that Venus is participating in and other planetary energies that have the same degrees are participating in. And then based off my knowledge, I give you the interpretation. So for those of you who are also astrologers, upcoming, advanced, I don't care. There you go. If you're curious how I get what I get. Yeah, I rectify charts all day because I need those degrees to be exact. So that's why I tell people, if you don't know your birth time, it doesn't matter. I'll figure it out. So highly Boyd from England, welcome. Thank you for your support. I've been following what's happening in London because my sister is there. Wow. Kung Fu Cosmic, <laughs> you guys are funny. Okay. K23 really needs to know about Kyle. <laughs> Girl, I need to dig deep and that's not for a public forum or, or boy, maybe you're a boy. I'm sorry, honey, I don't know. Okay. Chateaus, what crystals should you work with? I'm, what does your energy tell you? Because what, what's going to be good for one is not going to be good for another. That's why I never recommend stuff collectively. I'm very much so individual type of person, you know, because what works for one doesn't work for the other. And that just is because I'm a student of astrology. You know, I understand we're all just characters in a movie. 
<laughs> we don't really have any control. So anyway, um, what do you feel when it comes to what crystals you should work with? I mean, hold them in your hand. What are you attracted to? Do you see synchronicities popping up on your timelines or when you're out and about, you know? Do you keep meeting girls with the name Amethyst? <laughs> I don't know, you know? Um, follow your heart. Okay, King John again. Why are, oh gosh, King John. Why are, why are people so thirsty for a king? Why do you want to be ruled? I'm just gonna leave that alone. Okay. <laughs> Rad, Radhika is like, please answer K23 about her Kyle because she keeps writing. K23, you have to stop because they're, they're going to think that you're spamming me. And they're very protective of creators right now. So they will shut down your whole Google account. So um, if I can't answer the ones that I refuse to answer before yours, then I cannot answer yours either. And it's nothing personal. OK, but uh, the FTC is monitoring these videos. I really do not recommend you do private readings on public platforms. OK, um, let's see. Lee Boyd says there's a lot of unrest in, in London. Um, oh, my gosh. K23, boo -hoo. Oh, baby, what's wrong? I, uh, Okay. Mm hmm You want some? You can have these. <laughs> hey, let's see. No, you can stay up a little bit later. You got about 30 minutes. Yes. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> You're welcome. Astrology books for recommendations. Okay. I love when you go on Amazon and you get into the Kindle section and you have all of those self-published books from astrologers who are not these big wide known people, I think those are who you should study. Have you guys noticed I never really tell you what I read? I only give you some books here and now. <laughs> There's a reason for that. Like people don't need to know what kind of information you consume or what you're into. It, that's very personal if you're a free thinker. But I am Scorpio, Libra, and Virgo. Okay, my chart is governed by Venus and Uranus. I am paranoid and scary as, do you understand? So you can listen to me if you want. <laughs> but I mean, I'm always looking out for, what, what, what do they call this? Hypervigilance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ask my sister like everybody's always praying for me to meet a nice boy to make more friends because <laughs> as soon as I meet somebody I'm like hmm <laughs> and I have this rule that if I'm you know getting to know you like that I'm not going to read on you because it's not fair I won't start reading on you until we're really bonded <laughs> So I've just been like, nah. <laughs> but my Uranus is transiting into my eighth house. So that's going to be changing for me pretty soon. <sighs> Let's see. Thanks, guys. Yeah, my daughter is my twin. I spoke her into existence. I sure did. I didn't even realize it until uh, I used to have Facebook a while ago, a few years ago. And there was a time when it would show you posts from a year ago. And one year after her birth, I had posted like, I would love a little girl with chubby cheeks and bright eyes. I spoke her into existence and then she came. There's such blessings, guys. My children's father and I, there was a time when we were losing children. I, you know, we had so many problems with pregnancy. I didn't think I would be able to. And then I got my kids. So kids are great. And if someone tells you you can't do something, 
and you really want it, you have to have faith no matter what anybody tells you. Even when everything tells you that it's impossible, you have to believe and you just can't quit. Okay? And I don't have just one, I have three. And I still have my body. So you can do anything, guys. Okay, that sounds so vain, but here we are. So books on archangels. I would recommend that you work with them directly. You have to be careful because angels are in different hierarchies. So some of them are angels of war, for example. You have to be mindful of who you're calling through. Um, I will, okay, I'll, I'll give you guys something since you're like, please give us some knowledge. I would recommend that you research path working. Okay. For those of you who are adept, then you know. I would recommend that you research path working. I would recommend that you learn how to make your own seagulls, sigils, whatever people pronounce it as. S-I-G-I-L. Okay, path working and that is is the surest bet. Okay. It's all about developing a relationship. It is not about commanding. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay. Happy third birthday to your daughter, Lee, uh, Lee Boyd. So Tash Tisha wants to know, do plants relate to astrology? It's not an odd question. And absolutely. Most certainly. Sometimes as well, uh, farmer's almanacs are most useful to a crafty person, okay? Because you can know when to plant, when to harvest, etc. based off of that. And that can be uh, very, very good for you. Okay. I'm just reading the live chat. I think I'm going to get ready to go. It's been an hour. I appreciate you guys liking the video. Thank you for participating. Goddess Barbie is speaking a child into existence. Ashe. Baby dust on you, Goddess Barbie. Baby dust. Ooh, baby love, my baby love. I miss you. Oh, how I miss you. Diana Ross. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Wolfie Baby Doll. What a very interesting way to write your handle. I dig it. Wolfie Baby Doll wants to know, can they get spirit advices for their well-being? I wish you lots of love and good health and the Midas touch. No personal questions. <sighs> Let's see. Um, Haley wants to know, do I do free readings? I made an announcement at the beginning of this live and I'll make it again now that I'm leaving. I'm going to start offering that, but you have to enter. So in the videos, I'll make the announcement that every month I'm going to give away one karma yoga reading of your choice and you have to enter into the comments. I would like to enter astrology or I would like to enter cartomancy. And then if you are drawn and you win, you can pick the reading. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, when you are getting a personal reading from me, you are paying for my knowledge. For the years, I have spent studying every single day. Okay? So you are paying for my time. You are paying for my knowledge. And that is that. Okay. So, guys... Hang in there. It's about to get wild. You can zone out if you want and just focus on your love readings. You know, will they come back? Who's the new person coming? But you're also going to have to deal with reality as it is as well. One person, I forget who, but I remember this comment. They were like, not everybody wants readings on their glum, miserable existence. And I burst into laughter when I read it because I was just like, well, maybe that's why your existence is that way because you don't want to face it and acknowledge it so that you can make changes in it. 
And that's really what this current energy is about, facing ourselves so that we can make the necessary changes because a lot of what's going on is it can't be carried further. You know, you saw me come out of my privacy shell when I told everybody off on the lunar eclipse on June 5th. So much deep pain I had since childhood, you know, and seeing more police brutality opened up that for me, that wound and made it so fresh again. And I believe that that's happening in a lot of people's lives, wounds being opened up so fresh, you know? I'm gonna be here to tell you the truth as I see it so that you're very aware as you're navigating your day-to-day -day life. I, I can tell you this, most of it is very subtle underlying energy. And then every once in a while, there's gonna be an interesting conversation with one of the fast moving planets. It's gonna come and activate those slower moving energies. And then you have recipes for exposure. Positive, neg negative, neutral. So, uh, Chateau's Plateau, it is not a book. It is a way of working with energy. It is called path working. It is a system more so than it is a specific book. You, I want I'm telling you this, guys, because this is how, this is the lineage that I come from. I'm not gonna tell you everything from my perspective because that's what works with my energy. That may not be what's for you. So I'm gonna give you the key to the door so that you can unlock it, but it's gonna be up to you to open the door and step through it. What does that mean? I'm gonna tell you what you can go research, but I need for you to do the research and the studying. I'm not gonna give it to you because it's from my perspective and that serves you no good, okay? You need to, it's okay, mama. You need to know and attract to you for where you are right now. And as you progress and expand, you will attract what you need in each moment. So I'm not just gonna throw stuff down your throat or name off a bunch of stuff to sound fancy and educated, you know, or like I know what I'm talking about. I give you the key, you, know, you have to open the door. The key is path working. Okay, learning to make your own seagulls, for example, very beneficial. So watery being says the energy is erupting like a volcano. Absolutely, it's the energy of Pele. K23. K23 and everyone who is willing to receive, I send you the most highly refined, highly potent, most loving, most ethereal energy that there is possible. From the depths of the universe, from the farthest reaches of creation in all direction of space and time, I send you peace, abundance, prosperity, fulfillment, expansion. Whether you love me or hate me, I love you. I send you health, wellness, joy, contentment. May all of your dilemmas be solved. May all obstacles be removed. In the name of the goddess, we pray. Ashe, ashe, ashe. Okay, K23, Lord. Okay, I'm looking at the live chat. Um, K23 says, I'm such a great teacher. Don't, don't thank me, thank the goddess, baby. I'm just the messenger. I don't have anything to do with it. Yes, my cheeky daughter sneaks in. She's up late with me tonight. She's, you know, school got canceled. I, I educate her the best I can. But we're just like two buddies, you know, hanging out. Where there's one, there goes the other. <laughs> so all of our routines have been thrown off. <laughs> She's learning to read, guys. She's been learning to read her cards. She's learning to read the charts. She's born on Juneteenth. 
So she turned six in a few days. It's my Juneteenth baby. If you guys don't know, Juneteenth, it's the day that African Americans officially celebrate emancipation from slavery, even though they didn't tell most people that they were free and people were still enslaved 10 to 15 years after the fact, but I'm not gonna go there tonight. But uh, history. Okay, so they're saying happy birthday, honey. Happy birthday. To you, they're saying happy birthday. Hi. Feliz Navidad. Oh no, that's Merry Christmas. Wait, uh, how do you, it's cumpleaños, right? Feliz cumpleaños. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> no, no. Happy birthday to Saka. Happy birthday to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you have a fe you have fellow Gemini's here saying hello to you because they understand you, baby. They sure do. Yeah. Oh, you better pick them up. Yeah, I wanted to do. I wanted to do. Yes, Flybook says Juneteenth is a powerful day. It certainly is. When I study my daughter's chart in her last incarnation, her last lifetime, she left on June thirteenth or, or or Juneteenth. Pardon me. She left on June 19th, and then she was born again on June 19th during a Mercury retrograde. So if you study like I do, you know that's a karmic loop. So I can't help but wonder if she was living there, like during that time, and what happened to her, where the soul wanted to come back on that same day. Yes, I study my kids in depth. I know their whole lives. <laughs> I know the whole life, the wives, the, the husbands, if there will be any, the future children, the careers. I didn't know, man, like I tell you, they were three hours old and I was on my computer breastfeeding, typing it in like, oh, let me see what is going on in the sky. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Kasui says she would do the same if she had my knowledge. You do have my knowledge. Kaoshi, everyone has it. If I can tap into it, so can you. One is not better than the other, guys. This is not some special thing where like, oh, I was born with the rainbow light around me and all of the angels parted the clouds and they were like, oh, a reader is born. <laughs> no. <laughs> We all have access to it. You just like me, okay? It's just that I've been developing that I work in that muscle every single day for over two decades. That's the only difference is repetition. That's the only thing that separates you from where you want to be. Because when you're taking a break and you're tired of it, there's somebody else who hasn't given up and is putting in twice the hours. So you can complain or you can get with it. But I'm Virgo, Libra, Scorpio. So what do you expect? I'm just reading the chat. Yes, Goddess Barbie can all access it. And with what I'm get, with with what I'm developing and getting ready to come out with, you guys will have access to my interpretations anytime. It's just I had to get everything trademarked, and I'm just now. That took months, so I'm just now getting all of the actual trademarks solidified. So I had to do that first before I released anything because I have to protect my intellectual property and genius because I will sue somebody. K23 says anxiety gets the worst of them. Yeah, I feel you. I don't know what to tell you, baby because I don't know what's in your chart, you know? So I don't want to give you all this stuff and then I interfere in your karma, right? So what's the lesson in that anxiety? It's not a matter of fixing it, K23, it's accepting yourself. And when you accept yourself, you can work through it because where there's resistance, there's going to be an increase in what you're resisting. And when you surrender to it, you can work with it. It's very similar to meditation. 
It's like when you meditate, eventually, after years of doing it, you eventually will go into, you know, samadhi where the mind is blank. But that's a process and it's not initial. You know, when you're meditating, you surrender to the thoughts, you let them come and go. You don't have to hold on to them, dissect them, reenact things in your mind and play out little scenarios that are never going to happen. So when you're surrendering to that anxiety, K23, you can sit there with it. You can sit in it and be with it. You can say, I acknowledge your presence. I see you here. What's the lesson in this? You know? How can I let this energy express itself so that it can pass rather than me trying to resist it so then it grows? Because then you're suppressing it and eventually it's going to explode. You're going to go through a, a, a gnarly Pluto transit and boom, Pluto and Mars will be in the right degrees and boom, you know? So can we instead say, hey, I love me and this is what I'm going through right now? At least I have the courage to sit with that because most people avoid it. What's getting me so anxious? Why? Have a conversation with yourself. Knowledge of self. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. Oh, and triggers are beautiful. People get so mad at triggers and the people that trigger them. But aren't you grateful because it's showing you what you still need to work on? That person triggering you has nothing to do with nothing. Why are you getting mad at them, taking it so personal? The universe is showing you, hey, don't you want to let this baggage go, bag lady, bag man? Bag lady, you go hurt your back, dragging all the mess like that. Erica Badu done schooled you. You better listen to her. <laughs> the K23, if your future worries you and you feel uncontrollable, and I say this with love, but I'm going to tell it to you. Go sit down and talk to somebody. Don't carry that. You don't have to carry that alone. So many people in the spiritual community will reject and deny mental health, will reject and deny brotherhood and sisterhood because they don't want to get caught crazy or, you know, whatever other dogma they're buying into that prevents them from sitting down with themselves and sharing so that they can release that burden off their shoulder. You can be spiritual and grounded. You can be spiritual and take your medicine. You can be spiritual and sit down with your therapist once a month. You better take care of yourself because you all you got. And nobody's going to love you as good as you love you. You better stop looking for it outside of you because all that anxiety is about things that you can't control. All you have is here and now. All you have is you. Angel Lewis says, ride the waves of anxiety, spiritual breakdown needing reinforcement, courage to change for the betterment of self, replacement of lesser self, again, greater self. Oh, she. Ola Bella says, Ola Bello says, thank you for advocating for mental health, period. Okay, you better sit down with somebody and I'm not the person. So don't go sending me no 18 page long email. I'm just keeping it real with you, okay? I am not qualified. That is for someone who has the training and the resources. Now, if you got a missing family member, you think that they're involved in human trafficking, okay, then, then, then you send me an email, okay? You need help, advocacy, I got you. 
but some things are for mental health professionals and they are good, God bless them. Some things are for your elders. Sit down with them old folks before they're gone. The knowledge is priceless. Ooh. <clears throat> And yes, you can always find a new therapist if one doesn't fit. Don't you be afraid to set those boundaries. <laughs> My Libra is quick to block. <laughs> My Libra will get up and say, goodbye, you are not for me. And don't you be afraid either. Take care of yourself. You know, the only reason why you would be afraid to do that is because when you were little, and you stood up for yourself or you asserted yourself, set boundaries or said no, your family of origin would have punished you for that or taught you that that was inappropriate. So now you transition from adolescence to adulthood and there's issues with being assertive, not knowing when to engage in power and when not to. It's okay. You can recalibrate. So guys, that's it for me. I send you a lot of love. Thank you for participating. 51 people, 51 likes. I appreciate it. I enjoyed you guys as well. Sending you lots of love. I got to get some sleep, but I just, I have too much work to do. I'll sleep when I'm dead. <sighs> Mahalo, I send you lots of love, thank you. I'm gonna do more ancestor readings, okay? Um, I'll do a love reading for you guys, but it's gonna be next weekend. Pretty busy this week. So thank you, good night. Shaka is back to you. I send you lots of love, guys. See you next time. Um, the first person to timestamp this, free reading. <laughs> okay. Bye.